Hello, everybody. Good evening. Rose Thorne here. Today, I'm doing a special video, not on Foodie Beauty, not on Natter, but on Pete's. Because I think some things need to be said about Pete's. So as everyone knows, Pete is someone that he's known someone like Chantal since high school. They've known each other since their high school days. They've been friends for well over a decade. And Pete's is someone that lives with Foodie. And he's been without a job for quite a long time. Just living with Foodie and she's been covering all the expenses related to Pete's as well as expenses for herself and Natter. Before anyone says anything to me, I would like to say that all of the opinions and feelings in this video are entirely mine. They are no one else's, so take it as that. I'm not speaking for anyone else. But let's talk about Pete's and his financial situation. So let's go all the way back to the beginning when Pete's and Chantal were once upon a time, they were a couple. They started out as friends, and then they became roommates. And then there was a point where the roommate situation became a relationship. They were engaged. Foodie cheated on Pete's with several people, including Bibi. She became involved with Bibi, ran off to be with Bibi. While she was with Bibi, she was still getting money from Pete's. And then when her situation with BB broke down, she and Pete moved in together into the villa. And it was his name that got put on the lease because Foodie had gone through a bankruptcy. So she could not be the sole person on the lease. In essence, she used Pete's name and credit to get into the villa. Without that, she would not have been able to get into the villa by herself. So she used Pete's and his good credit to get into the villa in the first place. When they first moved in, Pete's had a job. He was making money. Foodie kept poking at him to quit his job so that he could be on YouTube with her. Uh, much in the same way that she's done with Natter. But she started off with Pete's before Natter. And I'm not quite sure if he lost his job or got fired, but whatever the case may be, at some point he did not have a job. And he hasn't had a job since then. So essentially, he's been living with Foodie and she's been covering all the expenses. So I did the math on how much Foodie has spent on Pete's. And the amount of time that they've lived together, like all the money that probably has been spent taking care of Pete's. So they've lived together for about three years. And I've taken into consideration that they are living together, that half of the expenses are hers, half of the rent, half of the bills, and food, and so forth. So I came up with a rough estimate of what I think it cost her to have Pete's at the villa and to take care of him as well as everything else around the villa. I think that 1500 is a good healthy amount when you figure in half the rent, half of the electricity, uh, half of the phone, half of the food. 1500 just seems like a healthy normal amount. That does not include all of the fast food that she's bought Pete's, all of the extra groceries, the trips that she used to take with Pete's to the comic book store. $1,500 just seems like a healthy amount for the amount of money that she spent on Pete's every month. And the amount that I came up with for the three years that she's lived with Pete's, in total, a rough estimate would be about $54,000. Now, I know that Foodie, when she broke up with Pete's, she left him basically in financial ruin. She has said that, and he has said that. That when she left Pete, she left him in a very, very bad position. 
uh, he was financially broken as well as perhaps emotionally broken. But Pete has been living at the villa for well over two years. Without a job, he doesn't contribute in any way financially, and he doesn't even contribute around the house as he should. But in the three years that he's been with Foodie, she has spent somewhere in the neighborhood of 50K uh, just to take care of Pete's. Now, if you're someone and you live with somebody and you are not working, even if you're not working, you can still contribute to the household. If you're not working, that means you have all kinds of time to do the housework or do the laundry, keep the dishes clean, vacuum the floors. Pete's doesn't even do that. He cannot come to Foodie and say, yes, I know that I'm not working, but I am contributing to the household. I am taking care of things that you don't take care of. He's not bringing anything financially to the table. And he's not even able to say, well, even though I'm not contributing money, I am contributing something. I'm keeping things running while you're away. Now, I'm somebody that I will confess that I've been involved in relationships before where I live with people and the beginning of those relationships, they had jobs, they were taking care of themselves. But once they moved in with me, they decided to live off of me and then everything went downhill from there. So I know what it's like to have someone live with you and they're not even trying to contribute. And I will say from personal experience that when you live with someone and they're putting all that pressure on you, they're not trying to take some of the weight off your shoulders. They're, they're not trying to help. It just, you, you tend to get resentful of that person and angry because there's somebody living in the house that they should be doing their part and they're not doing anything. They're just adding more of a financial burden. You know, that's one more mouth in the house you have to feed. One more person running up the electricity. One more person eating the food. Foodie is living with Pete's. And my opinion, I feel the reason why she is okay with Pete's living there and not paying for everything is perhaps she feels some leftover guilt over their past where she left him in financial ruin and she feels like she owes him. Another reason why I feel that she's okay with the situation and she's putting up with it is because some Pete's is somebody that he's known her for so many years. He knows all of her dirty secrets, all of them. He's privy to a lot of things that those of us on YouTube do not know. And he could easily open up his mouth and spill her secrets if she tries to screw him over one more time. So to keep him quiet, to keep him happy, she's willing to pay for everything. And I'm not sure what the financial debt was between them like how much money she took him for, how much debt she put him in. But I would think that it probably was not in the neighborhood of $54,000. Whatever financial debt there was between them, I'm sure it was not that amount. So Pete's is under the impression that because she's okay with the situation right now, that she's always going to be there and she's always going to take care of everything. He is too reliant on Chantal to take care of things. He's so reliant on her that he doesn't bother thinking about taking care of things for himself. And I, yes, I know he has depression and I feel for him if he has depression. I hope that he seeks out help and resources to help with that and maybe seek out help and resources to help make him more social to where he's able to go out into the world and do things. Because in my opinion, him being in that house with foodie has been very detrimental to his health. It's created a false sense of safety and stability that simply does not exist. Because if something happens to foodie, 
medically speaking, or if she simply decides that she no longer wants to take care of Pete's and she wants to walk away, she can easily do so and leave him high and dry. And he is in the same position right now that he was when they were first together. He had a job, he had money then, she left him in financial ruin, and then she left. And here we are again. You know, he moved in with her, he had a job, he had money, and over the course of time, he doesn't have a job anymore, he doesn't really have money, and he's in a position where due to, what's the word I'm looking for? Due to him being too comfortable with Foodie and too trusting in Foodie, he has essentially put himself in a position where he has no power. If she wants to walk away, she can. Her name is not on the lease. She's not legally tied to the villa. That means she's free to go at any time. And if she leaves the villa, if she moves out, that would mean that whatever damages to that villa are his responsibility. And financially speaking, he doesn't have the money to pay for the damages if he has to move out. So he end up might getting held liable for those damages, even though they're not his. He's the sole person on the lease. So the property owners would go after him. Speaking from personal experience, I will say this about any person who moves in with a person and they do not contribute to the household in any way, whether it's financially or doing the housework or just helping out in whatever way they can. Once you, as a person, once you turn into a leech like that, you just, you're not contributing anything and you're not even trying. If you have any kind of relationship with that other person, whether it's a friendship or a personal love relationship, once you fall back into that kind of behavior, you put out that vibe of, I'm basically worthless to you because I'm not trying to help you. That other person, they start to lose respect for you until they don't respect you at all. Foodie does not respect Pete's, not just because she is a person that she lacks empathy or she just doesn't respect people, but she doesn't respect Pete's because honestly, she has no reason to respect him. He's not taking care of himself. He's not trying to take care of things around the house. He contributes nothing. Many times in the past, she has talked about him living alone without her. Uh, she said it'll be better for the both of them. And in this one thing, I can agree with Foodie. I think it would be be very beneficial for the two of them to be separated. I think she and Pete, they are both too codependent on each other for all the wrong reasons. They back each other up on their bad behaviors. And because they do, there's no chance of growth for either one of them. You know, they're just, they're just reinforcing each other's selves that are not able to grow or be enriched or move on. Uh, I've noticed lately that Pete's, he's very concerned because there's been talk about Foodie moving in with Natter and he should be concerned because as I said, he's not got a job. He's not got any money. He's too reliant on foodie. And he is oblivious to everything going on around him. If I were Pete's, I'd be paying very close attention to everything going on because the warning signs are all there. The red flags are all there. Foodie is more obsessed with Natter than she ever was with BB. And she's determined to be with him in whatever that takes. She wants to be with Natter. The possibility of her getting a place for Natter and moving in is very real. But in the meantime, 
Bodhi is so wrapped around matter and sp time spent around matter that everything in her life that is not matter takes a very far back seat. And she's getting to the point where she's gotten to the point where she is resentful of anything that is a responsibility and a burden. She looks at Pete's as a responsibility and a burden. And she looks at her own cats in the same way. And notice how neglectful she's being with all three. She doesn't really want to be around Pete's. She doesn't want to be around the cats. She wants to be with Natter. And she looks at the cats and she looks at Pete's as just obstacles that are in her way right now. And she's trying to find a way to get rid of those obstacles so she can be with Natter. I don't like Pete's. I used to feel some pity for him, but considering his present behavior, the way he takes out his aggression on BBJ, the way he talks to her, I lost all pity and sympathy for him the moment he started doing that. Clearly, he's got some anger for Foodie that goes all the way back to when she left him to go be with BB. Clearly, he's got some aggression and anger and bitterness over the fact that she left him in financial ruin. But rather than go to Foodie and voice his feelings as he should, rather than take his anger where it belongs, he would rather vent out his anger and frustration on animals that can't talk back and can't fight back. And I'm sorry, Pete, that is not correct behavior. Those cats didn't do anything wrong to you. Therefore, you should not be taking out your anger on them. If you got something against Booty, take it up with her. Perhaps if you showed some courage to Booty, she might be as crazy over you as she is Natter. But Booty has no respect for you, Pete. You're just a burden to her, a very expensive burden. You're in the house, you're using up the electricity, you're eating the food. She's got to take care of you. You're a grown man. You should be taking care of yourself. And you aren't. You're just a useless lump to her that she just has to get rid of in order to be with her man. And I don't know if you're running around thinking that, oh, she will never get rid of me. She'll never do that to me. But remember all the way back, Pete. Remember all the way back to where the two of you were engaged. I'm sure that you had those same thoughts then, that you were engaged to that woman and you loved her, and yet she still cheated, and yet she still loved you. And now she's got a new obsession, and it's not you. It's Natter. So what's the possibility of it happening again? That possibility is very, very high. If you have any kind of sense, you will see the red flags, and don't bury your head in the sand start taking care of yourself because as i said you're you're not really contributing anything to foodie you got nothing to fight with you can't even come to the table and say well i'm not working but i am doing the housework and i'm cooking for you and i'm cleaning for you you're not even trying to show that you're helping at all you don't even try so if you're not willing to try to show that you're trying to be helpful. If you're bringing nothing to the table, then how do you expect someone like Foodie to respect you at all? How can you possibly expect that? You really can't. You can't expect her to respect you if you're bringing nothing to the table and there's, there's nothing to show. $54,000, Pete, 54 grand. That's what Foodie has spent on you for the last three years that she's taken care of you. Between your half of the rent, the bills, the trash, the food, the fast food, the trips to the comic book store, she has spent thousands on you. I don't know how much in debt she put you. I don't think it's right that you two were involved and she cheated on you and she left you in a bad way. And I'm pretty certain that 
may be part of the reason why you've gone without a job for so long, knowing your passive aggressive personality. You probably decided not to work as a way to get back some of what you lost. Maybe that was your passive aggressive way of saying, well, she left me in financial ruin. I can't really break her heart and get even that way. So since she left me in financial ruin, then all the money that she left me in financial ruin with, I'll just get that back by living off of her. But it's been three years, bro. Three years, $54,000 so far. And every month that you live with her and you're not working and you're not paying your share of the rent and the bills, that amount goes up. Exactly how long do you think Foodie is going to put up with that? Exactly how much money does she have to spend before you say, at least on a financial level, that you're even, that you got your pound of flesh and maybe you'll start working, maybe you'll start doing for yourself. Exactly how long does things have to go on before you get up and get a job and start working for you? If I were you, sir, I would start looking for a job now. Anything could happen with Booty. You can't rely on her forever. She doesn't take care of her health. Anything could happen to her at any time. And if something happens to her, then you're going to be in a bad way too, aren't you? You've got no savings. Your credit is bad. You've got nothing to fall back on. You'd be forced to couch surf if you could find a couch or perhaps staying with a relative or a friend. But understand, Pete, that you are very, very shaky ground and you're not bringing anything to the table. And every month that goes by that you're not standing up and doing for yourself, Foodie does not respect you. She doesn't respect you now. She won't respect you later. Because once a person loses respect for another person, once one person shows another person that they will leech off that person, they will freeload, you can't get that respect back. You just can't do it. It's gone forever. You've been living off foodie for three years, bro. That respect is gone. She'll never be in love with you again. She'll never look at you the same way again. Best thing you can do is take care of yourself. Because your roommate is that type of person. She's not honorable. If she does move in with Natter, she will not give you fair notice to find a job and make money. She is that type of person that she would slowly move her stuff into his place and then just simply contact you by phone or text and say, hey, dude, I can't pay the rent this month. You're on your own. She's too much of a coward. She doesn't like confrontation. She's going to leave you high and dry again at some point. And she's going to run away from the confrontation. And there you'll be with no place to live, no money, no job. It's been three years, bro. You haven't worked in the longest. At one point, do you stop being a professional leech and a freeloader and do for yourself? Even if you can't go outside the home and work, there are plenty of things you could do at home to make money. I know that you've got a YouTube channel, but it's not been that successful. And honestly, the only reason why you have subscribers on your channel is because of Foodie. If it not it wasn't for Foodie's name, I don't think many people would be watching you. And for the record, YouTube channels do take time to take off and they take a lot of hard work. So expecting your channel to be successful right away, that's just not doable. I'm just saying. But $54,000, Pete's 54 grand. That's what Foodie has spent on you. It's a roundabout figure. I don't know exactly how much she spent. But $1,500 a month is a healthy amount when you add in your share of the rent, the food, the gas, the electricity, the phone, all of that. You add that together, about $1,500 every month that she spends on you. 
and the number keeps going up because you're not getting a job, you're not working, you're not contributing, you're not doing the housework, you're not doing the laundry, you're not vacuuming the floors, you're not even doing proper cat sitting. You're not changing the litter boxes. You're not making sure the cats are fed. What good are you? What do you bring into the table? Nothing. So if you don't show any worth, how can anybody see the worth in you? You are just a financial burden to foodie. And more than once, she's talked about getting rid of you. It's on her mind. You're skating on thin ice. Hope you know that. 54K, Pete's, and the number keeps going up. Exactly how much more money does she have to spend on you before you say, I got my pound of flesh. Now I can stand up and do for myself. How much more money? 54K is a lot. It's time to stand up and do you and do you for you. Because like I said, anything could, at any time could happen to Foodie. She could have a medical emergency. You cannot go through life expecting a friend to take care of you in every way. You got to stand up and do for yourself. Be an adult, do some adulting. Being a grown man expecting a woman to carry you is ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. Come out of your room and just do for yourself, bro. Start contributing, bring something to the table. As, as I said, I've dealt with people in my past that lived off of me like that. And I gotta tell you, you got someone living with you that lives off of you, you start to feel anger and resentment. You start to look at that person differently because they are a burden that they're not even trying to help. They have no desire to help. They feel very comfortable just kicking back and relaxing while you do all the work. And all that anger, resentment leads to losing respect for that person. Foodie doesn't even like you anymore. She rolls her eyes every time you walk in the room. She wants to get rid of you. She wants to be free of you. I hope one day you do wake up. And you get away from foodie because, like I said, the two of you just do not need to be around each other. You both back each other up in bad ways. You cannot use foodie as a safety net so you don't have to deal with real life. Anything can happen to her at any time. 54K, Pete. I think whatever financial situation she put you in that it's been paid off so if that's the reason why you've not been working that debt's been paid what else are you waiting for what else is there i'm just curious let me know all right guys that's all i want to say for this video hope you guys have enjoyed it please take care and have a good one Bye bye